The vegetable lamb of Tartary Latin, Agnes Sithicus or Planta Tartarica Bahamas, is a legendary zoophyte of Central Asia, once believed to grow sheep as its fruit. It was believed the sheep were connected to the plant by an umbilical cord and grazed the land around the plant. When all accessible foliage was gone, both the plant and sheep died. Underlying the legend is the cotton plant, which was unknown in Northern Europe before the Norman conquest of Sicily. Thomas Brown's Pseudodoxia epidemica named it as the Boromes. In Ephraim Chambers' Cyclopedia, Agnes Sithicus was described as a kind of zoophyte, said to grow in Tartary, resembling the figure and structure of a lamb. It was also called Agnes vegetabilis, Agnes tartaricus, and bore the reported endonyms of boromets, boromets, and boromets, and boronets. In his book, The Vegetable Lamb of Tartary, 1887, Henry Lee describes the legendary lamb as believed to be both a true animal and a living plant. However, he states that some writers believe the lamb to be the fruit of a plant sprouting forward from melon like seeds. Others, however, believe the lamb to be a living member of the plant that, once separated from it, would perish. The vegetable lamb was believed to have blood, bones, and flesh like that of a normal lamb. It was connected to the earth by a stem, similar to an umbilical cord that propped the lamb up above ground. The cord could flex downward, allowing the lamb to feed on the grass and plants surrounding it. Once the plants within reach were eaten, the lamb died. It could be eaten, once dead, and its blood supposedly tasted sweet like honey. Its wool was said to be used by the native people of its homeland to make head coverings and other articles of clothing. The only carnivorous animals attracted to the lamb plant, other than humans, were wolves. The Greek historian Herodotus wrote of trees in India, the fruit whereof is a wool exceeding in beauty and goodness that of sheep. The natives make their clothes of this tree, wool. There is mention of a similar plant, animal in Jewish folklore, as early as a D-436. This creature, called the uh, Jidwa, Yidva, Yidavni, or Ayadni Hashevi, was like a lamb in form and sprouted from the earth connected to a stem. Those who went hunting the Edua could only harvest the creature by severing it from its stem with arrows or darts. Once the animal was severed, it died, and its bones could be used in divination and prophetic ceremonies. An alternative version of the legend tells of the Jedua, a human-shaped plant, animal connected to the earth from a stem attached to its navel. The Jedua was believed to be aggressive, though, grabbing and killing any creature that wandered too close. Like the Baramets, it too died once severed from its stem. The minor friar Odoric of Port Known, upon recalling first hearing of the vegetable lamb, told of trees on the shore of the Irish Sea with gourd, like fruits that fell into the water and became birds called vernicle. He is referring to the legendary plant, animal known as the barnacle tree, which was believed to drop its ripened fruit into the sea near the Orkney Islands. The ripened fruit would then release barnacle geese that would live in the water, growing to mature geese. The alleged existence of this fellow plant, animal was accepted as an explanation for migrating geese from the north in his work, the Shui Yang, or water sheep, and the Agnus Sithicus, or vegetable lamb, 1892, Gustav Schlegel points to Chinese legends of the water sheep as inspiration for the legend of the vegetable lamb of Tartary. Much like the vegetable lamb, the water sheep was believed to be both plant and animal, and tales of its existence placed it near Persia. It was connected to the ground by a stem, and if the stem were severed, it would die. The animal was protected from aggressors by an enclosure built around it and by armored men yelling and beating drum. Its wool was also said to be used for fine clothing and headdresses. In turn, the origin of water sheep is an explanation for sea salt. Earlier versions of the legend tell of the lamb as a fruit springing from a melon or gourd like seed, perfectly formed as if born naturally. As time passed, this idea was replaced with the notion that the creature 
was indeed both a living animal and a living plant. Schlegel, in his work on the various legends of the vegetable lamb, recounts the lamb being born without its horns, but with two puffs of white curly hair. Instead, the 14th century book, The Travels of Sir John Mandeville, is credited with bringing the legend to public attention in Europe. He describes a strange gourd, like fruit grown in Tartary. Once ripe, the fruit was cut open, revealing what looked like a lamb in flesh and blood but lacking wool. The fruit and the lamb could then be eaten. Friar Odric of Fruy, much like Mandeville, traveled extensively and claimed to have heard of gourds in Persia that, when reaped, opened to contain lamb-like beasts. In the Renaissance, the lamb of pottery was a frequent object of philosophical and botanical debate. It became an important heuristic to discuss the natural order of things and the Aristotelian scale of beings the mid-16th century Sigismund von Herberstein, who in 1517 and 1526 was the ambassador to the emperors Maximilian I and Charles V, presented a much more detailed account of the Baromes in his notes on Russia. He claimed to have heard from too many credible sources to doubt the lamb's existence, and gave the location of the creature as being near the Caspian Sea, between the Jake and Volga rivers, the creature grown from the melon-like seeds described was said to grow to 2.5 f 0.76 m, resembling a lamb in most ways except a few. It was said to have blood, but not true flesh, as it more closely resembled that of a crab. Unlike a normal lamb, its hooves were said to be made of parted hair. It was the favorite food of wolves and other animals. In 1698, Sir Hans Sloane claimed a Chinese tree fern, Sibodium baramus, was the origin of the myth. Sloane found the specimen in a Chinese cabinet of curiosities he acquired. The lamb is produced by removing the leaves from a short length of the fern's woolly rhizome. When the rhizome is inverted, it fancifully resembles a woolly lamb with the legs being formed by the severed petiole bases. The German scholar and physician Engelbert K. Emperor accompanied an embassy to Persia in 1683 with the intention of locating the lamb. After speaking with native inhabitants and finding no physical evidence of the lamb plan, K. Emperor concluded it to be nothing but legend. However, he observed the custom of removing an unborn lamb from its mother's womb in order to harvest the soft wool and believed the practice to be a possible source of the legend. He speculated further that museum specimens of the fetal wool could be mistaken for a vegetable substance, 